Welcome to the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. I'm Deborah Darris, your host and top Latina peak performance speaker. Each week, you will learn from top experts in the speaking industry, insider secrets of what works and what doesn't, so that you can monetize your expertise. My intention is to be your speaking coach, to provide you with resources and experts that have done it before you so that you can get your message out into the world faster and easier. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. I am so excited to bring you a very special guest today. It is none other than my friend and someone that you're going to love, a creativepreneur, Miss Kathy Connell Murillo. And she is an author, artist, and founder of the award-winning brand Crafty Chica. She spreads the gospel of glitter literally through her DIY projects and figuratively through her speeches, workshops, books, and essays. She's a former syndicated columnist for the Arizona Republic and now is a full-time entrepreneur, my friends. And she has had partnerships with Coca-Cola, HSN, HP, WordPress, Disney, and many, many others. She has authored seven craft books and two novels and has been featured in the New York Times, USA Today, Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, and more. Kathy is Mexican-American and native Phoenician, mom of two, wifey, and owner of five chihuahuas. And I like to call you the Latina Martha Stewart. Is that right, Kathy? You know what? I never say that. You never say that? <laughs> I don't because, you know, I love Martha, but I feel like I'm just so different from what she does. Um, I'm all about like maximal, maximum color and sparkle. And she's so minimalist, like cream and taupe. And I'm like, more glitter, more glitter. I don't mean mean, mean the style. I mean your prolificness. Oh, you are just constantly like Martha's like, I'm not only doing doing Yes, you're right. You're right. Yes. In this party, I also have a store. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, she has all these different avenues. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, you're just so prolific and you're so out there and just fully big and bold with your creativity. And I'm so excited to bring you and introduce you to all of my listeners so that they could become raving fans of you, Kathy. Because ever since I met you you. at Hispanicize, we all grow and just... You're just so generous and loving. Anytime I ever had a question about anything to do with anything, she was just always, she is always so (laughs) giving and open. And she gave me the most beautiful piece of art that is this beautiful lady. And it says meditate daily. And it's like such an inspiration to me when I meditate. So I feel like you're with me always, Kathy. So thank you for that. Oh, Deborah, thank you. I'm so excited that you'd like that piece and that you have it displayed. That just... I, that makes my day. I'm just so excited to be here. I'm, I'm, Likewise, I'm just such a huge fan of yours and all the positivity that you bring into the world. It's just so needed. And so thank you for having me. Yes. And, be, and the reason I'm having you is because I know that your journey is more than I even know. And I want people to hear, especially there's a lot of listeners that are new to speaking and new to entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. How did you first get started to be? become a creative preneur? You know, it all comes from life experiences and following what you love to do and trusting your gifts, trusting your talents. Even when things seem kind of crazy or they're not working out or maybe you're overwhelmed. You know, my husband and I, when we first got married, we vowed on our wedding night to make a living from art, music, and writing. And I think that at the time we didn't understand like what it's like to, you know, oh, physical manifestation, that kind of thing. But now we realize what we did. We put our order out into the universe of what we wanted. And thank you for coming. (laughs) I'm here if you need anything. (laughs) 
okay, I, I'm here in my store, Mucho Mas Art Studio in Phoenix, Arizona. And so I'm like, living my best life was selling art and working with customers. But back in the early days, we made everything by hand and sold it to um, sales reps who would sell to boutiques. So we would get orders of like hundreds of pieces, wow. have to make them in our, like it, our wish that we put out into the universe, it came very quickly and we were not prepared uh. for it. And we lasted for like two or three years, like literally having a, a sweatshop in our house in between myself and my husband. And then we, we had our first baby, our second baby. And we we're like, this is not the life that we want. Right. And I immediately went to the second wish that I always had wanted, which was to work at the Arizona Republic, our newspaper. And that's one thing I've always done. I have always made my list of what I wanted to do. So I would not settle being someplace where I was unhappy. Mm. And so I started there in the basement in the newspaper um, shredding room, worked my way up into a clerk in the features newsroom. They sent me to night school to finish my bachelor's. And then I became a double syndicated columnist, mm. a craft columnist and a movie columnist. And around that time, the internet was just starting to take off and I launched Crafty Chica because I noticed that in the general landscape of retail, there were no um, Latino product lines that it was either imports or fine art. There was nothing in the middle of like, you know, greeting cards or jewelry or lamps or home decor items. So I used Crafty Chica as a way to share these tutorials to empower women to learn how to make these things to reflect their culture in their house. And within a year of that website, I had my first book deal. Like I just found that lane that no one else was driving in. And I was Beyonce with my hair flowing ah, back and it. I owned it. <laughs> and so when it comes to speaking, all of these experiences that I had, the, the trials and tribulations, the successes, all of those are such valuable stories that I can actually categorize, <laughs> there's so many of them, to be able to fit entrepreneurship now. Right. And I would share them on my blog as essays. Uh -huh. And people would write to me and say, wow, I connect with this. Thank you for being honest about this. I have a new one that I last night I did bar flies in front of 600 people telling about the time I was so stressed juggling everything that I threw the family Christmas tree, <laughs> you know, like my balancing kids and then art orders and everything. And people were like, I'm so glad you shared that story because as moms being entrepreneurs and then with kids and grades and schools and holidays and finances, you know, your kids will flip your switch. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just trusting in yourself that these are real stories and they're valuable for other people to hear and have a takeaway for them. And when I first got started speaking, I didn't pursue it. I just would get these um, opportunities to go and speak. And, and, you know, I'd say, what is the topic? What kind of audience is it? You know, what can I, what story do I have that will help inspire this audience? I always ask that first. And now that I'm a legit professional speaker, I'm like, that was such a good thing that I did back then because I really was able to tailor what I was talking about to the audience. And I didn't, at the beginning, I didn't ask for any money. I just love to go and share my stories. And I built up a body of work. And now in addition to you know, all the things that I have, I, I love having speaking opportunities because I'm learning things every day. Even opening this physical storefront, it's been a year and a half, I opened myself up to a whole new audience of brick and mortar store owners. And now I speak about how to get customers through your front door and how to have special opportunities and promotions. I never would have known that had I not taken the leap to open a brick wow. and mortar store. Yeah, I know a lot of my clients that would love to hear you speak <laughs> because you know it's just like the retail <laughs> world has changed with so much online shopping uh -huh. and having someone that speaks 
from knowing, you know what I mean? You're not just speaking from what you think based on research. You've experienced it. So that, right. that is just yes. so amazing. And, and I love the fact that you're so intentional and that on your wedding day, you said, you know, we vow to be in alignment. What I believe is our soul's contract mm-hmm. because that we all come in here yes. with talent, skills, and abilities, and that our work in the world can be aligned with that if we choose that and focus our intention on that. Because mm-hmm. I believe we can be abundantly paid doing what we love, but it it takes it takes focus and marketing and branding and all of that. And I know you're a master at that. And I just would love to hear just advice you have, because you could be a great speaker, Kathy, but if you don't have the marketing and branding and like a wonderful sizzle reel, like you have, how, you know, what advice do you have for people that are new in the business or that are seasoned in the business and stuck to be able to book gigs with this new market? Okay, well, I believe that if you are an entrepreneur, you have so many gifts and stories and opportunities to be able to do speaking gigs. So I would pick the three areas that you know the most about what you do. And then think of what would the title of your speech be? What is the focus of it? What is the takeaway? Come up with two or three of those. And then you want to think who's your audience that you, who would re- receive this where you could, you know, go and speak to them. And then I would say put up like a one page website, have a one sheet that has your picture, you know, a, a paragraph of, you know, your achievements, what your topics are. And then if you have spoken to other companies or other groups put their logos maybe get some testimonials you want to look like the value that you Mm -hmm. feel you are worth so if you just go out kind of skimpy and winging it it won't be as strong of an impact as if you have a nice one sheet you want to get people excited to hire you or to ask you want people to look at your one sheet or your website and say wow I want her I want her to come talk to us. You want to get them excited. So create that wow factor about yourself. It doesn't mean you have to rush it. Here we are at the end of 2018. You could timeline it out to say, okay, I have two speeches that are tuned into what I know best. Here are the audience that I want to reach. Start locally and say, who can I talk to? Maybe some women's groups. Maybe you could go to a local bookstore and ask if you can set up an event where you can do a talk or or a workshop. Take pictures, get testimonials, have someone record you, build up that body of, of work so that you can have you can get feedback to make things better. Once you have those, I would say at least at least eight to ten of those built up, and and they could be for free. They could be the valid. The currency isn't always money. The currency is getting the testimonials, getting the experience, getting the flow of things, so that when you do up your game to go out to get the paid gigs, you have already put yourself through the obstacle course of of you know trial and error so that you're prepared and you know that is the first thing is just getting out there and doing it and sometimes it's easier to record a podcast or um, do a blog post or do a Facebook live like you don't have to make it so big that you freak <laughs> yourself out start small and do Instagram live and practice there and answer the questions so just have that confidence in yourself to to start it oh my god that was so good (laughs) I'm like taking notes I mean I I know everything that you're saying because I do it but I love the way you say it and how you simplify things you're just such a great natural teacher you know it's just like in your soul because you make things simple I think the biggest thing is is just getting out there and doing it because we do a lot of times, and I do this too, productive <laughs> procrastination. It's like where you say, okay, I'm going to first do a beautiful one sheet. I'm going to design this and then I'm going to do that. It's like, no, just get out there and start speaking. Like start crafting your speech. It won't work on paper. You have to, you know, if you 
type it up, present it to your kids, present it to your husband. That's how I started with my early presentations. I would sit the kids on the couch in my books. I would, you know, write a passage and my husband and kids would sit on the couch and I would speak to them. (laughs) They would give me feedback. Even yesterday for the event I had last night for the Barflies event, I practiced in front of my husband and then he was able to give me feedback. There is no better way to craft your your speech than to practice in front of people. And that's why now it's so easy with Instagram Live or Facebook Live or YouTube Live. I mean, it doesn't have, you can start small with that and then build up to in front of a live audience and then build up to a bigger audience. So there's just so many ways that you can go into it to, to really, um, you find yourself and find what you want to talk about and see what people respond to. And I love when you said about productive procrastination because yes. a lot of time um, experts come to me and I, I, I won't say any names, but we'll just say they have manana wana syndrome. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where they just want to rewrite their bio over and over and over oh again. And then yes. they're second guessing their audience. Like they know the topic that they're an expert at. But they're second guessing their audience. Well, is it this group or is it that group? Yes. How did you discover the audience that was the best fit for your topic and your expertise? Okay. Well, my biggest thing was paying attention to the comments on my blog and my post. That is gold. Like if you post an Instagram picture and then you see what people comment and you can respond back to them, you, you know right away what they're interested in. And I pay attention to all of that. I love to see what people are saying. I pay attention to what they're not interested in, to what they are interested in. So you can play around with things that way. Um, if you post a picture and then you write in the description, you know, maybe a little nugget of what you're, you want to have in your speech and, and see if it's a topic that gets people excited and talking, then you're like, oh my gosh, this is a good one. I'm going to go with this. Sometimes people don't go for it. And I'm like, okay, maybe they weren't as interested in that, but I definitely use social media a lot. And then also I'm in tune with conversations with people that I have locally um, when I'm at conferences or even at the grocery store, just talking with other people of, of what that emotional trigger, I guess you could say is. And then I tap into that. And for me, I know based on my blog and, and my um, social media following, it's women. It's mostly women. And it's women who are creative and who are juggling multiple things like school, work, um, a passion project, kids. So I know that we all have that in common of, of time management and pursuing our goals and you know, spending time on the things that we love to do and still making time for family, wanting to raise our kids in a positive way. I know those are the topics that they're interested in based on the feedback that I get from what I post. So I, that is exactly what I'm interested in. And it makes me feel like it's a sisterhood. And so I connect with other women who are on the same topics. So, and what I hear you saying, and I think this is so important for other people to look at and really hear, is that you listen to what your audience's pains, problems, challenges are, and you're helping them in your speeches, in your programs, with you, with, with the products that you produce as well, in exactly. what they desire, right? Yes, yes. I like to make them feel like they're a part of the process, especially like if I'm you know, designing something or I I got a new opportunity, I'll tell them about it. Maybe not on my biggest platform, but like on Instagram live or Instagram stories. And, and then they feel like they're a part of the process too. And it makes them feel special. (laughs) It makes them feel connected. Well, right, because they have a vested interest in creating and co-creating, you know, your product. Yes, yeah. And then when it when the things come out, they're there to cheer me on or they'll share their experiences and I'll cheer them on. So it's really creating that 
um, like an equal playing field where we're all in this together and we're all here to help each other. And that where that's where I really feel the strongest connection is, is people feel comfortable sharing ideas with each other. And what, what I heard you say is that you did it not on your biggest platform because you're getting feedback and testing, correct? Right, right. I'm very strategic in the way that I go about things. Like if I'm designing a new product for a product line or maybe I want to pitch to someone, I'll go on Instagram stories. And that's where I feel like um, at each platform, like I always say this, each platform is like a different party. Ah. It's a different vibe with a different group of people. And I feel like Facebook is like a big mall you know, like a big outdoor um, area with all different types of people. I feel like Instagram stories is more in my neighborhood. And it's like, you know, like friends who are more tuned into the same type of things that I'm tuned into. And so I feel comfortable saying like, okay, do you like this color or this color and why and then I'll get all these comments back or I'm working on a new speech this is for kindergarten teachers 1000 kindergarten Uh teachers these are the three focuses you know as a kindergarten teacher to me this is what I think they would be interested in and then I'll get responses like I'm a kindergarten teacher Uh oh my gosh you know it's not only the kids but it's the other teachers you know that we have to work together I'm like thank you that's so helpful and so it's creating a community and then it just makes it, you know, and then they, I help them in turn, you know, when, when, if they need something, it's, it's I, that's why I love Instagram stories. That's why I love social media because it's not just like shouting out what you're doing, but it's creating, interacting with people and, you know, and, and it does feed into speaking engagements because I'll talk about these things and then someone will come along and say, oh my gosh, I love your stories. I love what you, the Instagram live you did about getting up on stage and, you know, telling the most embarrassing story of your life. Like I would love to hire you to come workshop how to do bar flies, that kind of thing. So it, it, there's so many benefits. And, and by the way, all of you listening, Kathy is not just an amazing entrepreneur and not just an amazing speaker, but she kills it on social media. And she just gave gave you her secret sauce. And so you want to write this down in glitter, okay? Get your glitter (laughs) stick and your glitter stick. And what she said was interaction. Whenever I teach classes, I say in real estate, it's location, location, location. And in social media, it's engagement, engagement. It's not just about here I am doing this, here I am eating this. Mm -hmm. It's it's really what you're doing is using it as a focus group, your Instagram stories, to be able to find out how you could deliver an excellent speech because you're not just understanding what that you know the topic is, but you're right. really getting to the heads of the people you're speaking to so that you're solving problems they don't even know they have. <laughs> but they're right. Yes, yes. And you know what I'll do? Like the people who really take the time to interact with me and give me feedback. I will go through and I will watch their stories and I'll cheer them on. And it just, that makes them really, they become your strongest cheerleader then because they, they see that it is like a, a, you know, a two way street. Yes, exactly. And so I wanted to kind of segue into that marketing piece because I know a lot of people that are excellent speakers. They're like the Mm -hmm. best doing TED Talks and everything. And they're wanting to break into becoming that professional paid speaker. And they're Mm -hmm. not really using social media to the best of their ability. What recommendations would you have for speakers on social media to really position themselves to shine? Okay, I think the most important thing is to get out of the mindset of like, oh my God, this is a business, I need to book speaking gigs. You need to get in the mindset of being authentic with telling your story and going on using um, using a combination of Instagram stories, posting pictures every fifth um picture on your feed should be some kind of video. What you want is for your Instagram to end up on the explore page of your followers. 
that is where you reach the maximum amount of people. And to do that, you need to use all of the tools. I, I love Instagram because it's just such a great way to connect with people, new people, new people. So, I mean, get on there, set up your account, utilize Instagram stories, take them through what you're doing during the day, take them through maybe some of your challenges. I think the best experiences that I have had is starting out the day and saying, oh my gosh, I have XYZ coming up tonight, this many hours. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this done. Okay, let's get started. And you carry them along through the process. And then at the end of the day, here it is. I did it. Oh my God, it came out great. Ah. I love to see that. It's like a little reality show ah. unfold. Because what you're doing is you are showing that you are walking the walk. You know, I feel like if you go on and are too perfect all the time, are always giving advice, giving advice, giving advice, it's like, oh, you're too perfect. I can never live up to that. But if you can go on and, and show your vulnerability and how you overcome it and should be the example, that is a win right there. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love stories. And now Facebook has stories as well. Um, it's just a way to really show a slice of life. And Snapchat is like that too. You know, you could use any of those to, um, to display. But yeah, definitely, you know, when you set up your account, make sure you put your speaker, um, put your topics, and have a link over to your speaker site so that they can get information about you. If you have a website, put a calendar of the different places where you're speaking. I would even do maybe once a week or once a month, do an Instagram Live or a Facebook Live where um, you can do a Q&A with people or you can you say, okay, here's the topic, you know, three ways that, you know, you can create more time in your schedule. And then if this is what I'm going to talk about Thursday. So you're creating these little pockets of content. And so that when someone goes to look to see um, what you're about, they'll be like, wow, I love what this person is talking about. I want to hire them to, to, you know, be our keynote. And then this is the topic you want it on. And then you could craft something new for that. But yeah, you, you definitely got to go on social media and relieve the pressure of thinking that, oh, this is going to, you know, be the ticket to make a million dollars or book a million gigs. It can be, but you want to go with, at least in my view I look at it first with the intention of I want to go inspire people I want to show people what it's like being a woman my age pursuing her passion making things happen if I can do it you can do it and by the way you can hire me to come speak to your group to you know I'll focus in on what your group is about I feel like that makes it more successful. Ooh, that was so good. <laughs> I'm going to have to transcribe this podcast because I know you're going to want to pick up what Kathy is throwing down. And I think one of the best things to do is to follow Kathy so you can you can really connect with her and see what she's doing and be inspired by her creativity because one of your other gifts that's what I that's what I mean when I compare you to Martha Stewart someone with so many gifts just so many things that you're good at and you're good at storytelling you're an amazing storyteller so no oh, wonder you. you love Instagram stories because one of the things that a story has is a beginning and a middle and an end and it has you know, oh and let me a challenge and a climax that you help overcome the challenge too we had some technical difficulties and we lost our beautiful kathy crafty chica but what she was saying was you can go on google and look in the city near you storytelling and that there are opportunities to put your name in a hat and they'll pick you and you have five minutes to tell your story. And that's what she was saying was great practice for you as a speaker, because in order to really hone your craft, you need to be in front of an audience. So she was saying how she practiced in front of her husband. You could go to your local bookstore. You could go to a local yoga studio, offer to do a workshop. And in the beginning, she said, do it for free because the currency is not getting paid to speak. The currency is getting those videos 
um, for your scissor reel, getting those testimonials for your one sheet, and getting those recommendations to paid gigs. So that is how she began, and that's what she recommends. She said that you could stay connected with her online. Just go to Crafty Chica. She's on Facebook. She's on Instagram. I believe she's still on Snapchat as well, my friends. And when you connect with her there, make sure that you told her you listened on the Be a Paid Speaker Now podcast. You thank her for her time, for her talent, and for being true to her creativity, being that creative entrepreneur. We all would like to be on purpose and in alignment with our passions, and Kathy is a great example of that. So thanks again for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Ciao. Thank you for tuning in to the Be a Paid Speaker Now podcast. If you love the show, feel free to share it with friends, I believe sharing is caring and when you write us a great review your karma points will be adding up and i'd like to give you something if you love the show you can download a free copy of my latest webinar how to get paid five steps to be a paid speaker you can download it at debradaris.com d-e-b-o-r-a-h-d-e-r-a-s.com slash speak now Remember, you are the messenger for the message, and with the power of synergy, anything is possible.